Hello, this is Mighty Owl. Picture this. We're headed on a nature walk today. While we were waiting to get started, my friends Sue, Chin, and Jenny collected some pine cones. Let's see what they found. We can see that Sue has four pine cones, Chin has two pine cones, and Jenny has five pine cones. But we can organize the pine cones to show their collections even better. Let's line up each person's pine cones into rows. Great! Now we can see even more easily that Sue has four pine cones, Chin has two pine cones, and Jenny has five pine cones. It is also much easier to make some conclusions about this data. You can see that Jenny has the most amount of pine cones, and Chin has the least amount of pine cones. You can also compare more easily. For example, Sue has two more pine cones than Chin. What we just created is called a picture graph. A picture graph uses pictures, or symbols, to represent data. Here we represented the number of pine cones that each kid found. Instead of using the real pine cones, we can use a picture of a pine cone to represent one pine cone found. Neat! This is going to be very handy for showing the data that we collect on our nature walk. Let's keep going! First, we are going to try some bird watching. Here are all the birds we have seen. We can use this information to make a picture graph. First, write out the four categories. Cardinal, Blue Jay, Sparrow, and Robin. Now we need to pick a picture to represent our data. Let's use an outline of a bird. To show that this is the picture we are using, we put the information in a key. A key defines your picture or symbol, so anyone looking at the graph knows what it represents. For us, one bird picture will represent one bird. Now we need to put the data in the graph. First, we saw four cardinals. So put four bird pictures in the row that says cardinal. Next, we saw three blue jays. So put three bird pictures in the row that says blue jays. It's important that you line up the pictures in each column. This keeps the data organized and easy to understand. The number of sparrows is five, so put five bird pictures in the sparrow row. Finally, we saw three robins, so put three bird pictures in the robin row. Our picture graph is almost complete. We just need a title. A good name for this graph is Birds We Saw. Great work! Now that our data is organized, we can see that we saw the same amount of blue jays as robins because the number of bird pictures in those two rows line up. Let's see what other animals the kids have seen on our nature walk. Here's another note from their notebook. Wow! All sorts of animals are out there on this nature walk. Let's make a picture graph and see what this data looks like. Just like before, we can first write the name of each animal. Then we need to decide on a picture or symbol. In a picture graph, the picture or symbol can be anything. It just needs to be clearly defined in the key. For example, we could choose for our symbol to just be a circle. Let's make one circle equal to one animal and write that in our key. Now we need to put the data in the graph. First, there are seven chipmunks. We can represent that with seven circles. Next is nine squirrels. We can represent that with nine circles. Be sure that you keep the symbols aligned in each row. The number of rabbits is five, so we can show that with five circles. And we can show eight geckos with eight circles. Finally, we need a title for our picture graph. You could call it Animals on the Nature Walk. Nice job! You created a picture graph showing all of the animals that the kids saw. While we have been graphing, Sue has been making her own picture graph of the types of plants she has seen. 
Let's take a look at her graph and see if we can help her out. I think we can help make Sue's picture graph more accurate. Take a look at the picture graph and think about what looks incorrect. First, Sue needs a key. Otherwise, we won't know what her symbols mean. To make a key, Sue is going to have to decide on one symbol. Right now, there is a different picture for daisies and tulips and a whole lot of different symbols in the wildflower row. Let's use just one picture of a flower. The key can show that one picture of a flower represents one flower that Sue saw. Now Sue has a title, so that's good. Well done, Sue. Right now, the picture graph is titled Plants. That's not wrong, but Sue's title could be even more specific. All of the plants Sue saw were flowers, so let's call it Flowers We Saw Today. Great work. You really helped Sue out, and now her picture graph looks spectacular. Today you learned to make picture graphs. You learned that picture graphs help organize data by using a picture or a symbol to represent the data. Every picture graph should have a title to tell you what the picture graph is about, and a key to tell you what the picture represents. Stay tuned for more Mighty Graphs!